Hey everyone, how are you all doing? Today I'm going to be taking a look at the Marvel Legends 85th Anniversary Target Exclusive Warbird Miss Marvel Carol Danvers figure and I am unbelievably excited and relieved to have this figure. I have been a huge fan of Carol and, you know, Miss Marvel, Warbird, whatever you want to call her, since Avengers Earth's Mightiest Heroes. That was my first introduction to the character of Carol. It was also my first introduction to the character of T'Challa as well. And so getting this figure is incredibly important to me for a bunch of reasons. You know, like we obviously needed Warbird Carol for the classic shelf for even a more modern shelf too, you know, quote unquote, early 2000s, which is so long ago at this point now. And I feel gray hairs forming just thinking about that. But I am unbelievably excited to have this figure. So without further ado, let's get into what Miss Marvel comes with. So as you can see on Carol right now, she has a pair of fists and then the little swirly effects, which I was thinking about this earlier. I wish they would like take this effect. This is the one that came with Iron Fist and shrink this down and make it so we can get some for the female figures, because I think that would be really cool, instead of just having the little swirly-twirly um, effects. But I I love that she comes with a pair of fists and these, you know, effects. But she also comes with this head sculpt, as you can see right here, which is, I would say, a more modern look, especially compared to the other head. And I like this head sculpt. I think it looks really great. I think it looks beautiful. Um, the mask is okay. As you saw from my thumbnail, I did make a... I bought two copies and I painted up the head to give her the white eyes and the fully blacked out mask. This is my look for Carol. This is the early 2000s. This is my look for Carol. So that's how she's going to be on my shelf. So this head might get like thrown to the wayside, especially because since I have two of this figure and she comes with an alternate classic head and then open hands as well. And this is how she's going to be on the classic shelf because, you know, you kind of got to go with this head sculpt for the classic one. And it's just, it's the same thing as the other one. It's actually an entirely new sculpt in terms of hair and the face. It's completely different from the other one. So if I go ahead and actually just bring that in real quick, I can show you guys what they look like side by side. And they look really good. You know, one's got the gritted teeth. One has a little bit more of an open mouth. You can kind of see her teeth in there. And then taking a closer look at the details, she is, like I said, on the Black Widow deluxe figure body. So you can see, you know, she's got the butterfly joints and all that stuff, which we'll get into here in a second in articulation. But she has the gold, you know, lightning bolt type thing on her torso, which looks awesome. I absolutely love how this looks. It does kind of get a little gappy. Like if you go to turn the torso, it, you know, kind of starts messing up how it looks on here, which is not ideal, but it's also not a huge deal in my opinion. Her arms are cast in black. So right here you can see the skin tone doesn't match up as nice as it could, but it's really not noticeable. I would definitely though check if you're able to check and see if you can get one that has good paint apps because like my other one that i have has like a black dot on the arm so she also has her iconic sash thing down here which is really cool it is a floating piece and it's kind of a pain in the ass so i did glue it on my other one but this is really cool and i know some people will definitely take this and make a wired one to go on her which will be really nice but you can kind of get some posing out of it. You can put it like between her legs or you can do like both behind, both in front of. You could even turn it if you wanted to to have it on the opposite side if you were kind of, you know, feeling that. But it also really wouldn't make sense because of the fact that her hair kind of swoops to the one side. But she has, she actually has a little bit of the, uh, of her legs and hips printed up on the torso, which I, or on the lower torso, which I did not expect at all. I did not expect that. I expected them to kind of like be a little bit more, um concealing with the outfit but I'm glad that they didn't because it wouldn't have been as accurate I wouldn't have been upset had they not have done it but it's just cool that it you know they did keep the the aesthetic of what she's supposed to have I do really enjoy these boots the fact that these are separate sculpted but I have one question and it's why is the thigh cut right here instead of making the thigh and the boot a separate piece so you could just have the swivel up here and not have to worry about this super ugly cut right here. I don't know why Hasbro did that. Um, it's it's really stupid. It's really funny. And it's not like a deal breaker to me by any means. But if you're going to go to the trouble to make this a separate sculpt here. Why would you not just... Wh I, what? <laughs> it makes no sense. 
She has the pinless legs, pinless arms, which look really great, both double jointed, which obviously, you know, I keep saying we'll get into an articulation here in just a second. But her costume, you know, her costume's always been, you know, pretty simple. But it works for her. And I, this is my favorite look for Carol. Now, as for articulation, this head sculpt, the classic one, it can't go back at all. It can go forward all the way, which is really good. It's got a little bit of tilt and some rotation. It is on the hinge in here. Her arms can go out that far. She has butterfly joints, so they can go that far forward and that far back. She has rotation, bicep swivel, double jointed elbows that go up all the way. Both of her sets of hands have the back and forth hinges. She doesn't come with trigger finger hands like Black Widow did because she doesn't need it. She has a diaphragm cut, which can rotate, tilt, all that good stuff. Can kind of crunch forward a little bit, but mostly you're going to get the ab crunch for that, which goes that far forward, which is really good. Goes that far back, which I think that just, did that just mess up my glue on this? I think it did. Damn it, it did. That's annoying. Oh, well. Her legs can go out that far, can go that far forward and that far back. She has a thigh cut instead of, you know, the boot cut, which is just, or, you know, like boot at the top cut, which is just so dumb. She has double jointed knees that go up almost all the way. No actual boot cut or anything like that, but her feet can go back that far, up that far, and of course, ankle pivot. And now taking a look at some size comparisons. Here she is next to the X-Men 97 Rogue and then the Deluxe Black Widow. And I love how these three look. I think, to me, Carol should be a little bit taller than both of them, but it's not a deal breaker for me. I don't mind her being a little bit smaller. I just feel like she should be taller than both of them. I'm not sure why, but just for whatever reason, my brain's thinking that. And as I was saying before, I would really love it if we could get like, this deluxe figure body on a lot more figures. I do have one question though. Why? Because other than Sharon, which I think Sharon from that Shield 3 pack has this same body, the Black Widow Deluxe articulation body. I, why have both of these bodies been Target exclusives? Has anybody else noticed that? I feel like that's really weird. And then here she is next to Sam Wilson, Captain America, She-Hulk, and then the Luke Cage and Iron Fist 2-pack from 80th and 5th anniversary as well. And these all look great together. I still stand by that I think Carol's just a little too small, but it's not a huge deal breaker. Maybe, ooh, I don't know. I was going to say, maybe you could like switch out her, her feet and maybe give her like the Madeline Pryor heels, but God, then she'd never be able to stand also, most of us are probably just going to have Carol in a flying pose anyway, so it's really not going to matter that much, but it's just something that kind of bothers me just a little bit. And then here she is next to the greatest action figure of all time, the Mafex Bane, and then the astonishing Wolverine from this 85th line as well. And I think these look great. I think you could definitely have this Carol crossover with your Mafex stuff if you really wanted to. Overall, I thoroughly enjoy this figure. I really do. She's something, a figure that I've been wanting for a very long time, and in my opinion, does not disappoint. Now, if you're someone that doesn't want to do customization in any sort of aspect or anything like that, and you wanted the blacked out mask with the white eyes, then I understand being disappointed for sure. Um, but I am someone who doesn't mind customizing, and I even, you know, enjoy actually being able to do that for certain figures and whatnot. Um, so I really enjoyed doing this to this second copy of Carol that I got. And that made the figure a 10 out of 10 for me instead of a probably like a 9 out of 10 in its base form. So, you know, do with that information what you will. But the articulation's great. It's the Black Widow body, the deluxe articulation. It's outstanding. It's a pose to just mess around with. The only limitations really come with the hair, you know, and her not being able to look up as well. But since you have the ab crunch, you can get her to bend back and still get into looking up in a flying pose. So it's not too terrible in terms of that aspect, but it's not, you know, it's not great. So yeah, this is a must have if you are a Warbird, Miss Marvel, Carol fan, you gotta track this down. So yeah, that's gonna do it for me and I will catch you guys in the next one. See ya.